Hey friends, welcome to the Sunshine Farm. I'm Jen and today I'm going to be planting in that hugu culture bed right behind me. Ago, I built this hygge culture bed mostly by myself. I finally finished by digging up the sod, flipping it over, piling down logs, putting down different sticks and wood chips, hay. Then we put down the sod back on top of the hygge culture mound and finally added a nice layer of compost. We planted in it that first year and I shared all about that and I was so amazed, actually shocked, at how much this bed produced for us. Last year, I didn't post about it as much because I was really busy being pregnant and <laughs> growing a baby, but we did have a lot of success with the hygge culture mound. I had a lot of success with things like bush beans and we had tons of kale in this bed. This year, I'm actually transitioning the hygge culture bed into a mixed annual perennial bed. And I wanna take you along with me, tell you about the things I have planted that I'm going to plant and show you the process of getting that done. So I'm going to be digging out some of the dandelions around the bed, giving those to the chickens, putting down some wood chips around the bed so it looks nice and clean and also mulches out the weeds, and then we can get planting. So let's start with the cleanup first. section and it was exhausting now it's time to go give the chickens the weeds and then we're gonna come back put some wood chips down and soon I'll be ready to actually plant the fun part right so let's go give the chickens some snacks hey guys hey guys you want some treats <laughs> So they'll work through those weeds in no time, as evidenced by the dandelion remains. I accidentally left the gorilla cart in there, so I'm gonna have to go in and get that. But I'm really hoping that this blooms soon because it's been growing really nicely and it's finally climbing the coop, but it's a climbing rose. So we'll see what happens. This is the third year we've had it, and so far it hasn't really done anything awesome. I would give some weeds to the goaties, but they don't really eat them, as evidenced by the dandelions in their little goat pasture. But you wanna say hi? I can feel it 
one gorilla cart full of wood chips down. But Kai just woke up, so I'm going to hang out with him and entertain him outside while Chris finishes up this task for me. Okay, so I'm gonna sit here with baby Kai, give him, give him some milk. And Chris, who's right here, is going to work on finishing up getting just this covered up with some wood chips, just some fresh wood chips since we <laughs> unearthed some of the soil, which means the dandelion seeds have lots of places to germinate. So we're gonna get this covered with the wood chips. Agui? And, and then I'm probably gonna plant tomorrow morning, but don't worry, I'll record and make sure you guys get to see the planting since that's what this video is all about. I can see it in your eyes. I can feel it in your touch. I can hear it in your voice. Okay, well, as you can see, Chris did a great job getting those wood chips spread out all around the hookah culture bed, which means no dandelions going to seed. We are going to be done for the day. I will plant tomorrow. We're going to take this guy and go to Target to pick up some things. And then we are going to go to bed. See you guys tomorrow. Kitty. Kitty. <laughs> it's a kitty. It's very nice with his pets. <laughs> <laughs> From all things at once without thinking twice. And I knew hey friends, it is Tuesday and yesterday we got the bed all prepped and ready to go. So today is time for planting and I have some exciting things I'm going to show you that I'm planting in this hygge culture bed. The first is three blueberries that I picked up yesterday. I wanted to plant blueberries in the hygge culture bed but I didn't have any and then yesterday I found some while we were picking up some chicken feed. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get some some peat moss to plant with these blueberries. Now I try to avoid buying peat moss whenever possible since it's not a sustainable product, but it is one of the best things to plant with blueberries because of its high acidity levels and it helps acidify the soil. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little bit of peat moss and we're gonna get planting these blueberries in the hygge culture bed. And I have so many other things to plant. We have cherry tomatoes, we have zinnias, and nasturtium and cucumber seeds and bean seeds and all kinds of fun things that I'm gonna plant in here. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I So I got the blueberries planted and then I went inside, I ate lunch, I got some work done, I pumped, and now it is after four o'clock and I'm back outside to finish planting the hygge culture bed. So what I have here is some herbs and flowers, yarrow, which is a perennial flower. I have nasturtium and zinnias and California poppies. I have basil, uh, purple basil, green basil, Thai basil. Um, cosmos and zinnias I think I already said that I have some echinacea and marigolds and I also have a tomato a cherry tomato that I'm gonna plant in here so I'm gonna plant all of these things and we'll I'll walk you through all these things that I planted I got the blueberries planted they have peat moss and soil acidifier in with them and they're gonna be here for the long haul after I plant everything, I'm going to come in and put some wood chips on top so that we can work on soil and moisture retention and keeping the weeds from growing in this bed. So let's get these flowers planted. I started all of these myself, except for the marigolds and echinacea, which I got from Fruition Seeds when I was down there back in April for my birthday weekend. I'm going to try something new with my tomato and I'm going to plant it on its side and let the roots establish down low. I'm gonna dig kind of like a trench. 
I read that that allows the roots to establish faster because there's more surface area of the stem in the soil. So we'll see how it goes. Marigolds in the bed. Since my goal is to establish this as a perennial bed, I'm gonna plant some yarrow and some echinacea, both of which are perennials, and we'll come back year after year. I'm also gonna plant these indigo rose cherry tomatoes, which I started late, that's why they're so little. I'm gonna go ahead and plant these in this bed as well. So we've got perennials, annuals, um, flowers, all the good stuff, tomatoes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plant some herbs. I have some um, basil, I have some parsley, and I have some rosemary that I'm gonna plant in here. And then finally, I'm gonna put some seeds down, put some squash seeds, cucumber seeds, and call it a day. Okay, before I plant seeds down in this bed, I'm going to give it a good water because I just transplanted a bunch of stuff. I ended up adding in a couple ground cherries, one pineapple ground cherry and one of the common type ground cherries, as well as a couple zinnias, lots of different basil. So we have a lot of stuff in this bed. It's gonna be such a fun thing to harvest from. So let's go ahead and water this guy and water everything in really well. I will go ahead and get some mulch down on top of it around plants and then I will direct seed. I have a lot of flowers left, as you can tell, because these are all for my cut flower garden, as well as putting some in other spots around the garden. There are a few brassicas here and there too, um, and some herbs left that I'm gonna plant in other spots. Everything's mulched. I left some areas open for mulching so that I can go in and direct seed and then I will mulch after everything germinates. So mostly the top is mulched where I planted the soil blocks and the perennials. Also in this bed are a few perennial flowers that I did not mention. Hollyhock here. Um, we have something called cardinal flower, which is a perennial. Egyptian walking onions. And then we have lupin right here, which is really cool. Um, and it's gonna be that really pretty red, red color. And then the blueberries. At the ends, I planted kale a while back. So those guys were planted in early, early spring. And I've been munching off the leaves here and there. Here's from the other side what it looks like. So it's a pretty long bed. I don't know how long exactly, maybe 25, 30 feet. It's almost as long as our main beds, but they're more like 50 feet. So maybe about three fourths of that length. So maybe 30 feet. And the blueberry varieties that I planted are Jubilee. That's a Jubilee. And then the other two are Blue Jay. So they're different varieties. So they'll pollinate each other and they're all mid season producers. So they'll bloom around the same time, which means they'll be good pollinators for each other. I'm gonna go ahead and plant some seeds in the ground. I'm gonna start with some cucumbers, some salt and pepper pickling cucumber. Love these for fresh eating and pickling. Lemon cucumber, never grown this before, first year trying it. And then these two squash, a summer squash. Love this variety, very mild, kind of nutty flavor. Um, I haven't tried this pumpkin, it's a small. And then I'm planting a few different types of beans. This sequoia bush snap bean, this um, garden bean, which is Dorf Taylor Horticultural and then dragon tongue, which is one of my favorite snap beans. So I'm gonna plant these guys in the bed. Last year I found that cucumbers and beans did really well, so I'm hoping for the same results this year.
Well friends, I got everything planted and it only took me like two days to get this done. Thanks for joining me for this video. I hope you, I hope you loved watching me plant the hookah culture bed and stay tuned for a full garden tour coming your way very soon. Such a good feeling to get the garden planted. <laughs> so cute. Say hi friends. Hi. You wave? Hi. Good job. Good job.